say is I played a ton of games when I was little. Like a ton. I mean, this was in the era of like rampant piracy where everyone copied like floppy disks and crap like that. And I bought games if I ever had any money. I bought the boxed versions of games as well. And my parents would buy them for me as well as like a gift or whatever. And I played, I mean, I don't want to know how many games, but it would have been probably easily in the hundreds as a child across tons of systems. Commodore 64, Amiga, and PC over the eight, over the years, as well as uh, Atari 2600, ColecoVision, and that probably is it for home systems. And I, we never had a Nintendo Entertainment System, but I played it at like friends' house occasionally, right? So I played a lot more games when I was little uh, than I do now. And there's a couple of different reasons for that. One is obviously maybe more busy. Uh, and also, uh, I mean, well, there's a lot of reasons, but I do still play games fairly frequently. And I guess what I would say is my interest in gaming is still there, but I've noticed that I think one of, there was like a downside to, so there's kind of like a, there's kind of like a thing where like people started using engines instead of making engines. And naively you would think, and I think I probably would even think, had I not experienced it myself, that that's probably just mostly good. Like, it's like, well, you know, if you, if you think about it purely from a, like, separation of labor kind of a thing, there's going to be people who are really good at making engines. And the chances that you will have those people and also really great game designers is lower than being able to do both separately, right? If I'm a great game designer, but I don't know John Carmack, how am I going to make Wolfenstein or whatever, right? I'm not, because he's the only person who can make that at the time. Well, there's maybe a couple other people, right? But it's like mostly just him, and two other guys or whatever. So naively, I think like, okay, so we have Unity and Unreal and these things now. That's probably good. Unity's, I have issues with it in terms of the quality of the output of the engine. But that's more... I think it would have been nice if it had better technical underpinnings, right? But that's a different statement than the one I'm about to make about what happened with the enginification of things. It feels like the degree of creativity in games has dropped dramatically since the enginification. I don't know why that is. It may have nothing to do with the enginification, it may have more to do with just the lifetime of games. Could be the engines have nothing to do with that. And it's just the lifetime. But I'll give you an anecdote. I went back uh, uh, two years ago, four years ago. I, I, you know, and I don't even know when I went back. I went back to my parents' house. I visit them occasionally. They live back in Massachusetts. I went back and the ColecoVision this old home console. They, they still have it. And uh, I, I took it out. I sort of tried to get a controller working. Of course, they're so old and broken. A lot of times, like, there's only one controller where all the directions still work. <laughs> Things like this, right? Because the contacts are old and all this other stuff. And I just go through the cartridges. I just start playing the cartridges. Every single game I played was different. And most of them we don't even have games like them today. Just completely different. I like playing, I'm like, Venture, Ladybug, Mousetrap, uh, uh, Pepper 2. There's like all this stuff, they're all different. Tongo Bongo, like, I'm just thinking all the, and then Doc Young Jr. Like, all the games, the mechanics are totally different. And nowadays, you buy games. If it's a AAA game, there's only one mechanic. It's you push the move the character with the left stick and you push buttons on the right side to like do some attacks. And there's a giant menu system to do all like, where's the skill tree and learn the new like trying to fight. It's, it's the same game. You, you, can't even, you can't even open a AAA game without five minutes in being told to push some button to crouch in the tall grass to avoid being seen by enemies. Every single one, it doesn't matter which game. They're all the same, right? And so 
we ended up in this place where big games, like the ones that you would buy in a store, like the old ColecoVision games, they're all the same. You can buy indie games, and there are some creative games happening in that space. And I can name certain ones, like, you know, Re Return of the Obra Dinn is an example saying where somebody came up with a like, totally new mechanic, kind of. I mean, you could point to things that existed before. I was like, no, this is completely different. And whether you like it or not, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, you know, this, it's new. this game was written right? from scratch with, with the engine, so it kind of supports your theory. Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it's Unity. Really? Right? I think so. Okay. Okay. Okay, then um, I'm mistaken. Okay. I think so. Okay. It doesn't really need any engine stuff, right? Because it's just you walk around a 3D environment, so it's the kind of thing you can do in a walking simulator. And they yeah. came up with a good sort of thing to put on top of that, right? So there are times that people are making these really creative new ideas that are interesting to play, right? But most of the time when I boot up a game, it's just a game I already played with a new skin on top, right? And that's wearing on me a bit. So I find that a lot of times now I... I just like my attitude going into games is kind of bad. So I was like, well, I'm just going to play some tonight and they're probably only going to be bad. And then they are right. Um, and by bad, I don't really mean like low quality. Cause that might be true. There might be high quality, like horizon forbidden West or whatever. Like the quality is incredibly high, but the game is just, there's no game. I've already done all these things. There's nothing I'm going to do in this game. I haven't already done. Right. And so uh, it's like, my brain is getting kind of tired of it. And I wish that I had more things. And part of that might be like better discovery. There's probably some indie games out there right now that we're doing some things that I would find fun and interesting. I just don't know about them because there's so there's 10,000 games released a year or whatever. How do you yeah. find the good ones, right? Um, <clears throat> but the other problem I think is that like, well, because you don't have to program the game from scratch, you're very likely to make something that's whatever you can do straightforwardly in one of these tools. Like, whatever is the easiest thing to make in Unreal Engine, which is this set of games in some shape, then whatever is the easiest thing to make in Unreal, that's what you're most likely to make because you all are starting at this point. So I don't think it was true that all the people who made the ColecoVision cartridges were better game designers. I bet they were worse game designers a lot of times than some of the people making these fairly derivative titles in Unity or something. But because they had to start from nothing, they weren't forced towards what is the easiest thing to make in this already existing tool set, which is walking around a 3D environment and pushing a button to do something, right, or whatever. <clears throat> and so I don't know. I don't know if the engines have to do that or not. I think you obviously can make new experiences in these engines, but I just think maybe people aren't as inclined to do so. Another aspect of it that I'm sure doesn't help, that has nothing to do with engines, is the barrier to entry getting too high. Yes, you don't have to make an engine, but no, you can't get away with the kind of art that you were shipping in ColecoVision. I mean, that's below the, even the acceptable art, pixel art-wise, than that people do now. So a lot of your attention is focused towards sequencing animations and importing sprite sheets, all these things they didn't really have to do because there was very little that they could fit in memory in the first place. So it was that was not going to be much of it, right? So yes, they had to make the engine. Yes, that was a bunch of work that you don't know how to do because you're using Unity, but also you're having to marshal all of this other stuff that they never had to think about at all, right? Yeah. Um, so yada, 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 right?